Okay, if we would all stand for our invocation, please. Chaplain Gerhardt. Thank you, Chairman Noonan. Thank you. Would you bow your heads as we pray? Lord, our God, with the crisp, cool changes in our weather, the familiar sounds of seasonal music, and the twinkling lights that surround us, we find ourselves once again in the holiday season. And we're reminded of the importance of giving. As Christians celebrate the gift of the baby in the manger, as Hanukkah and Christmas presents are given to our loved ones, we're reminded of the importance of giving. As we hear the bell ringers and we see them standing by their bright red kettles collecting for the needy, we are reminded that this is a season of giving. And while we seek to give personally of our time and our treasures, we find ourselves grateful to be supporting the hospital system who gives the most to our county. We're thankful that we have Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System, the very last non-for-profit hospital in our four surrounding counties. And we're grateful for all the wonderful care that we are able to provide for our neighbors. And as we reflect upon the importance of giving, we thank you that Sarasota Memorial was able to provide to give almost 90% of the charity and Medicaid care of all the hospitals in the county. So Lord, our God, we ask for your divine hand of favor upon our continuing efforts to provide for the needy in our community, not only during this season of giving, but throughout the year. These things, together we pray. Amen. 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 And now our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, Liberty and justice for all. So I will uh, call the uh, meeting of the Sarasota County Public Hospital Board to order. Um, I have a uh, statement I need to read in terms of public comments. Any citizen desiring to address the hospital board should turn in a speaker card to the board secretary. If the citizen comment pertains to an item on the agenda today, the comment will be heard early in this meeting. Otherwise, it will be heard toward the end. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to five minutes. Vendors, suppliers, or other persons seeking hospital contracts awarded on a competitive basis are reminded that their ability to address the board may be restricted by the terms of the invitation for bid, request for proposal, or other purchasing criteria. Lastly, the board has established a claims adjustment review panel comprised of representatives of the board, the medical staff, administration, and legal counsel to review and negotiate the settlement of claims. Accordingly, the board will not entertain comments on or discuss or negotiate claims at this meeting. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is um, approval of orders of the day. So I would ask for a motion. And a second. Second. All right, we have a motion in the, in the uh, second, so any comments or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of this item, please indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed? No? The motion carries, thank you. Next on the agenda is approval of the minutes of the meeting of November 18th, 2019. So I need a motion. motion. All right, and a second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, assuming there are no comments or edits to the uh, minutes, they stand uh, approved. Next on the agenda, board reports. Uh, approval of board committee appointments. You'll recall that our last meeting we elected the officers for the, this board year. Excuse me. You will recall that at our last meeting we elected the officers for this board year. The next step in our organization, organizational process is for the leadership and membership of our board committees. And I believe we have a motion. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the board committee leadership and physician membership as appointed by Mr. Noonan as the board chair. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any comments or discussion regarding that? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. And next on the agenda is our uh, physician speaker, uh, yes, Dr. Thanks. Schulman. I believe you have an introduction. Yes, very glad to introduce jo Dr. Jonathan Hofberger. He is also currently our chief of surgery. He's been on staff for nearly five years. Comes by way of originally uh, Southeastern University College of Osteopathic Medicine in Florida, then up to Michigan State for general surgery, and then Rush Presbyterian 
for cardiovascular, and we welcome him for a minimally invasive cardiac surgery discussion, which I think is one of our, our very big beacons here at the hospital. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me uh, today. I um, just want to talk to you a little bit about minimally invasive cardiac surgery. Um, it's uh, something that uh, we started doing here when I came, and the program has been uh, rapidly growing. And I just want to explain to you a little bit about it and where, where, we've, uh, where we've come. So um, traditional open heart surgery, as you know, is done through the middle of the chest. It's a uh, 12 to 14 inch incision. Uh, we put all of our cannulas, our pipes, uh, we do all of our operating right through the same incision. Um, it's a good operation. It's been done that way uh, since cardiac surgery began. Um, we have excellent exposure. Uh, we can feel and touch. Um, we're able to control um, emergency situations. I would tell uh, my residents, we call them uh, SEEs, or significantly emotional events. Um, it's a tried and true reproducible operation with low mortality. And the procedures uh, performed efficiently in a shorter period of time. But the drawbacks to it is uh, pain, infection, blood loss, increased length of stay, and the recovery times are longer. So for a sternotomy, I tell everybody it's about uh, eight to 12 weeks to recover. And some people will tell you it can even take up to six months. So uh, in, in comes minimally invasive surgery. And I'll show you a little bit about how we do it and stuff. But first, you know, why should we be doing it at Sarasota Memorial? Number one is it's good for patients. To get out of the hospital uh, and back to re return to activities of daily life in a shorter time. Um, as you'll see, blood loss is less. Um, trauma to the body is less. And the procedure is safe. Uh, we do this operation with the same uh, risks uh, as the open operations, and in some cases, we have better outcomes. Um, it uh, distinguishes our program from others in the area. Um, the only other programs that are, are really doing this is um, south to the south of us in, um, in, uh, Fort, uh, in uh, Naples. And then uh, you have to go down to Miami to, uh, to University of Miami to have this done. There's really nobody doing high volumes north of us, including Orlando. Um, the patients are educating themselves. So if they're not offered this operation, then they're finding people that do it. And I get people from all over the place that call up and they, have, they know they need mitral valve or aortic valve surgery and they want it done minimally invasive instead of open. So who's a candidate? It's, it's all valvular surgery for the most part. If you have to do bypass surgery, then you really need to be open because you need to get to all the territories of the heart, not just where the valves are. Um, but we do all the valves. We can do uh, ventricular and atrial septal defects. We can um, do combinations of these operations. We can do arrhythmia surgeries. But when you have to start doing bypasses, we really need to get the outside of the heart to the front, to the back, to the sides. And that you really need to do through a, a, a more open incision. So why, why doesn't everybody do it? Well, first of all, it's the, the, the equipment's expensive. Um, we have um, e each tray is you know, probably twenty to $50,000. And then we have a bunch of trays, uh, depending on the volume. Uh, we don't use the robot, so it's a little bit different in that respect, but uh, the capital outlay uh, for the tools and equipment, it's, it can be a te technically difficult procedure. Um, if you don't do a lot of it, um, it's difficult to teach because you're going through a small incision, so it's kind of a, a one-man show. If, you, uh, if you're looking inside the body, you can't, if, if your resident or whoever you're teaching is looking inside, you really can't look over their shoulder. It's hard to do. And um, low procedural volumes in many centers makes it uh, uh, complicated and you know not not you know obviously the more times you do it the, the more often you do it the better you get at it and uh, like I said the surgeons aren't exposed to the techniques in surgery so um, here's a here's a quick rundown of how it's done this is the traditional sternotomy incision um, this is a hemi sternotomy so instead of opening the whole sternum we open part of the sternum um, and that is really um, some people's versions of minimally invasive um, but is it really minimally invasive if we're still using the sternal saw um, to me no uh, so we take a traditional sternotomy incision like this, and we move it over to the side, to the ribs. And that's where we do the operating, through the ribs, so we don't divide the sternum at all. And since we're in Florida, I have to use the golf course, uh, a golf analogy. Um, we use the same instruments, just like the same old, old instruments that we always use, but we change the shafts on them. And so uh, they look like this. And uh, they, they, they operate in your hands the same way, but they're long, single-shafted instruments, five millimeters. And uh, this way, you don't have these big, open instruments that are that you're hard to get through the incision. The incisions uh, for, for minimally invasive are about uh, six centimeters, so it's about two and a half inches. And this is a, a video that they did um, that really explains the procedure, um, how it's done. Today, the most common approach for open heart surgery is a sternotomy, which requires a 12 to 14 inch incision through the breastbone. 
But a growing number of experienced surgeons are using minimally invasive cardiac surgery techniques that require only a two to three inch incision between the ribs instead of cutting the breastbone. The surgeon will operate through a keyhole incision using a small scope and instruments. Another small incision in the groin connects the patient to a cardiopulmonary bypass machine, which takes over the functions of the heart and lungs while the heart is stopped. The video is running slower than the words, so it might... The surgeon and team <laughs> then can perform a you range of procedures, word, from valve it. replacement and repair to corrective surgery for arrhythmias and defects. I wear a camera on my head like that, and that's how people in the room when can complete, see what's going on. When complete, the small incisions are closed with minimal machine, scarring and trauma point. to the body. Other benefits of minimally invasive cardiac surgery include less blood loss, fewer complications, and a faster recovery. Learn more at S. mhheart.com. So this is us. So you're looking inside the heart here, and you actually open up the heart, and this is how we get in there and are able to do the, the operation. So we can do, this is, in this case, it's a mitral valve surgery. In other cases, it's a, um, it, just stop. In other cases, it's a, uh, an aortic valve and so forth. So you, so you get the picture on how it's done. Um, and this is our, our a minimally invasive case mix. Um, in 2015, you can see the first year we did 23 um, uh, minimally invasive operations. And the mix corresponds to, um, to below uh, the aortic valve replacement, mitral valve repair replace, and other multivalves. The red is the aortic valve replacement. Um, so the first year we did 23. The second year uh, we did 60. Um, the third year I was here in 17, we did 74. Last year we did 91. And uh, we were at 91 in November of this year, so I think we're going to go a little bit over 100. And the reason, if you look at the red line, uh, the, the, uh, if you look at the red, you can see how it was 35 last year, it's down to 27. That's because those are aortic valve replacements, and we're actually, most patients now are getting TAVR for that. So that's why our aortic valve volume is going down. We've done a, about 350 of these mini cases since I've been here. Um, these are the, I, I don't have the actual numbers for the mini cases, but I wanted to just show you. This is our STS uh, star ratings. We're very proud of this. 1,017 programs are, uh, are, um, uh, submit their data to the uh, Society of Thoracic Surgeons. Um, actually, we submit our, we give our data to Columbia, and they, they uh, uh, compile it for us and send it off to the STS. And um, three stars is the highest rating, is the top, uh, it's really the top 10% of programs. And then the more three stars you have puts you in a smaller group. Um, and you can see that for um, all three, for, for these, two of the programs, so it's for, um, for uh, coronary bypass and for um, aortic valve and cabbage, we have three stars. And the one for straight aortic valve, we have two stars. But if you look at the, um, the, the, the bar where the, there's a small black dot right here, right? And what we have to do is we have to be to the left or to the right of that black dot in order to be a three-star program. You can see we're right on the dot. <laughs> and depending on, the, depending on you know, which, which uh, yeah, it, every three months it goes over the dot and then comes back to that. So we're essentially three stars in there most of the time. And then these are some of the concomitant cases that we do where it's mitral valve repair replacement or mitral valve cabbage, and we're three stars in that. So actually, uh, the last uh, the last harvest, there were only three programs in the country that had three stars in all five categories. So we're very proud of that. And so Dr. Sell wanted to make me be sure that we got that to you guys as well. Um, and uh, so that's, uh, that's what I have to tell you. So, <clears throat> doctor, thank you. I mean, that's an amazing uh, work that you and your team and Dr. Sell does. Um, does fantastic. Any, any questions? The, the uh, minimally invasive? Yeah, minimally. I'm the only one in the group that does the minimally invasive. And uh, doc, we, we, we've designed it that way because this way I'm doing a large volume of it. And like I said, the more you do, the the better, the more efficient you get at it. So when I first came, we were doing just straight aortic or straight mitral and thin patients that, you know, fit the, now we're doing double valves, we'll do aortic mitrals, mitral tricuspids, even triple valves, redos, all that stuff, because we've just gotten so efficient at doing the regular cases that we've been able to expand to the more difficult ones. So. You ever use a microscope to do it? We don't use a microscope, but I wear a camera on my head that gives everybody else visualization, and I have the, um, I have microscopes on my eyes, the, uh, the loops. So that's the, those are the, it does give me magnification. Jim. Doctor, what is the difference of recovery uh, and getting back on one's feet from 
this procedure as so, opposed to open heart surgery? Yes. Yeah, so you're in the hospital for a straight open for an open open heart case. You're in about um, four to five days. Here you're in really about three or four days. Um, for minimally invasive, the recovery is about two to four weeks instead of eight to twelve weeks wow. for open. Uh, so it's a it's it's a significant difference. Blood loss is less, uh, um, and uh, returning to activities of daily life are sooner. Um, if you go home with a sternotomy, you can't drive in the uh, you can't drive a car for a month. You can't be in the front seat of a car. You can't do lift your arms above your head for six weeks. You got to wait for the sternum, the bone to heal. For minimally invasive, I tell people go home and do whatever you want to do. I mean, you know, you'll be limited by some of the pain you have. But we've had pa patients that have d run half marathons within you know. 35 days. We've had people on the golf course in two weeks. We've wow. had so it's it's wow. not everybody, but uh, yeah. but it does. It, it it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. So yeah, certainly fewer wound care. Uh, no wound no sterno care. no sternal infections. I've yeah. never had an infected yeah. uh, 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 incision from the side, so the wound wound complications are minimal. So. All right. Thank any you. other questions? Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, Excel Award. David. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I will actually say just uh, for Dr. Hoffberger, um, at last year's gala, uh, he, we had a lady who he had um, um, done surgery on, and she got up at the gala and, um, had taught and showed pictures of her half, was it a full marathon or half? Half marathon. Mm -hmm. 34 days post-op, so it's pretty, pretty amazing, amazing. Uh, what, he's, what they're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now on, to, now on to our Excel Award? Yes, please. So um, I am uh, happy to introduce to you our, our December 2019 Excel Award winner, uh, Carol <laughs> Ivanoff. Carol, come on up. Congratulations again. Expecting it this time. Yeah, when we did it at Management Council, she was uh, – uh, a little surprised, and, and I said, well, how did they get you here? And just, I, what did you tell me? Robert told you you had to come to listen to something he was presenting? Yeah, a presentation. A presentation. <laughs> that she didn't know she was the presentation. <laughs> so, um, coincidentally, the board heard from um, uh, Supply Chain today, earlier this morning, uh, about all the great things you guys are doing. And she's in my, biomedical, uh, so she was part of that, pres um, that group that you guys heard from this oh, morning. Yeah. Yep. So, completely coincidental. Um, all right, the Excel recipient for December is Carol Ivanoff. Carol is a project procurement specialist in biomedical engineering and has been an employee at Sarasota Memorial since April 2015. Carol's Excel nominations have a common theme. She's extremely organized, completely dependable, and an incredible multitasker. Here are, here are several comments from your peers. Carol joined our department on the project team and immediately tackled a large workload without skipping a beat. She instantly became a huge asset to each individual as well as the team as a whole. Carol works with people all over the hospital and makes everyone feel like they are her main priority. She has been a saving grace for our entire team. She has been very supportive of the equipment planning department and has kept the ship running when the project meeting schedules get hectic. She's someone that we all depend on. Carol is, is willing to jump in and help with anything requested of her. She makes juggling many tasks look easy. She also trains others effectively. She always has a smile on her face, remains positive, and uplifts everyone that works around her. Carol, thank you so much for everything that you do. We very much appreciate it. consistently demonstrate the mission, vision, and values of our organization. They are superior performers that make an extra effort in the quality and care of our patients and families in the community. The hospital board and administrative staff of Sarasota Memorial Healthcare System recognize you, Carol, with the Excel Award for the month of December 2019, signed by David Verinder, President and CEO, and William Noonan, Board Chair. Thank you. It's an honor to receive this award um, and to work underneath the uh, leadership of both the biomed and supply chain staffs. Thank you. I Thank you. It. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Very good. Okay, next on the agenda is a report of the medical staff. Dr. Schulman. Actually, we have nothing to report this month. Okay, thank you very much. And next is the foundation report, Mason Ayers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, don't have a lot to report this afternoon other than we are less than a month away from the gala. Yes, you're a little busy. Yeah, we're a little busy, but it's all good. Um, and also just wanted to let you guys be aware of the next event on our calendar, which is the Women in Medicine Educational Luncheon, which is on March 27th, and it's going to be at Michael's on East again. So I hope you all can attend. That concludes my report. Okay, very good. Thank you. Any questions for Mason? No, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to recognize Foundation, the announcement uh, last week of over half the money has been raised for the new cancer center. Congratulations to you and your staff, and thank you to the donors uh, who've helped made that possible, but great job. Thank you, Mr. Hudson. It's definitely a team effort um, with our staff, the hospital, and most importantly, the community. So we are on our way. Uh, we still have half to go, but uh, we are uh, looking forward, as the community is, to having that new cancer institute available. So. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tram. Thank All right, next is the Secretary's report, Britt Reiner. Yes, uh, we will be holding our January meeting at one week later in the month to allow board members to attend the leadership conference the week prior. From 9 to 10.30, we'll have the Joint Finance and Audit Committee meeting. From 10.30 to noon, the Quality Committee will meet. From noon to 12.30, there will be a closed session of the hospital board. From 12.30 to 2, the board lunch and issues and financial review, and from 2 to 4, the board meeting. That concludes my report. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Very good. All right, next is the treasurer's report, Joe DiVirgilio. All right, Mr. Chairman. I have one, uh, one item this morning, approval of the bad debt and charity care, and I present a motion. I move approval of the bad debt and charity care for the month of ending November 30th, 2019, in the amount of $24 million. $266,000. Second. All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. All right, thanks, Joe. Next on the agenda is financial highlights. Bill Wolgen, our CFO. Good afternoon. I have the financial highlights for November, and we'll start with total revenue for the system. So for November, we had total revenue in the rating agency format of $83,443,000 compared to a budget of $81,342,000. Fiscal year to date, and this is two months into our fiscal year, uh, actual total revenue of $170,858,000 compared to a budget of $163,170,000. <clears throat> total expenses for the system in the rating agency format for November $77,451,000 compared to a budget of $77,838,000. Two months into our fiscal year, revenue or expenses of $158,388,000 compared to a budget of $156,523,000. Operating income for the system in the rating agency format. Five million nine hundred ninety-two thousand, compared to a budget of three million five hundred four thousand. We had an operating margin of seven point two percent, compared to a budget operating margin of four point three percent. Fiscal year to date, our operating income twelve million four hundred seventy thousand, which generates an operating margin of seven point three percent, compares very favorably to the budget of six million six hundred forty-seven thousand a budgeted operating margin of 4.1%. Moving on to statistics, and these are fiscal year to date, so two month numbers. Average daily occupancy for the hospital, 572 patients compared to a budget of 539 patients per day. The average acute length of stay, 4.15 days, and last year was 4.29 days. Admissions through two months, 7,027 compared to a budget of 7,079. Surgery cases, again, in for the, this is for the two-month period, 4,108 
compared to a budget of 4,168. And so far in births, we've had 721 compared to a budget of 704. Outpatient registrations, 77,316 compared to a budget of 77,922. And registrations in our two emergency care centers, 20,355 compared to a budget of 19,759. And through two months, our case mix index for all patients, 1.74, compared to a budget of one, um, I'm sorry, uh, for all patients and Medicare patients, 1.85. Mr. Chairman, that con concludes my presentation. All right, very good, thank you, Bill. Any questions for Bill? Okay, thank you. Uh, we need to go back to uh, item 10 on the agenda, Treasurer's Report. The Chair recognizes Joe D. Virgilio. Uh, apparently I had the wrong number in the uh, motion. It should have been, so I would have, I'd like to amend my motion uh, and the amount that of bad debt and charity care for the month of November 2019 should have been 23 million. $783,000. All right, do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Motion. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. For those of you who are getting up on, hung up on whether or not that's exactly expressly correct under the Roberts rules, it doesn't matter. You guys are only generally guided by Roberts rules, and I think the board all agrees that you want the correct number over procedural uh, exactitude. We do, but would not the correct uh, thing to have been is someone on the prevailing side to call that back up, defeat it, and then to pass the new one? I won't press the issue. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to impress you with my knowledge. <laughs> Okay, we will move on then to uh, committee reports. You saw my eyes get a little big. Yes, yeah. your prior experience at yeah. Roberts Rules. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, committee reports, Mission and Planning Committee, Greg Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On December 16th, uh, the Vice President of Post-Acute and Rehab Services, Maria DiCarlo, <clears throat> and Medical Director of Rehab Services, Dr. Alexander Bajoric, <clears throat> excuse me, provided the committee with an update on inpatient Rehabilitation Services at Sarasota Memorial. To begin the presentation, uh, they educated the group by defining patient rehab and physical medicine. The team then shared their rehab services strategic plan and timeline over the last five years, which included the opening of the rehab pavilion in 2017. Next, they discussed the admissions, average daily census, payer mix, and details on the population that inpatient rehab, rehabilitation serves. The team also shared patient rehabilitation's growth from 34 beds to 44 beds to a final of 54 beds in 2018. Even with the recent growth, inpatient rehab has positive outcomes, quality metrics, and patient experience scores. To conclude, they discussed the future of inpatient rehab which includes increasing awareness of services and clinical pathway development, continuing to identify areas of opportunity in the market, and receiving CARF reaccreditation in the fall of 2020. For the next presentation, Robert Milano, Executive Director of Supply Chain, presented on the Supply Chain Department. Mr. Milano began the presentation by sharing the system's strategic roadmap and growth. He then gave an overview of supply chain, which has evolved over the years to support the system's growth. Then Mr. Milano discussed the supply chain department in detail, including operations, equipment planning, biomedical engineering, and value analysis. He also explained the importance and role of cooperative services of Florida and LESAR within the system. <laughs> Lastly, Mr. Milano went over the contracting highlights for fiscal year 2019 and year-to-date fiscal year of 2020, which has saved the hospital millions of dollars. And lastly, the final presentation to the committee was the ranking recommendations for the kitchen renovation and expansion. John Salt, Director of Engineering and Facilities, presented the top three general contracting firms. The Mission and Planning Committee made the motion <clears throat> and passed the recommendation to the board 
to approve the proposed ranking selections. And at this time, I move approval of the rankings of the general contractor firms for the kitchen renovation and expansion project as recommended by the Public Selection Committee and the Mission and Planning Committee. And they are first, the Angeles Diamond Healthcare Group, second was J2 Solutions, Inc., and third was Creative Contractors, Inc. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate so by saying yes. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Next is the President's Report. David Berender. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am uh, going to start today, as we uh, frequently do, with our organizational report card and look at our um, five areas that we um, report on every month. Starting with service, we have a goal of um, having our system patient experience or our likelihood of recommending um, being eight out of 10 in the number of areas that we cover at, the, at, at or greater than the 75th percentile. I'm happy to report we are meeting that goal, uh, hitting eight out of 10 at this point. In the people um, area, we have a goal of having our turnover of our part-time and full-time employees that have been hired within the past 12 months to be a turnover rate of 24% or lower. Uh, happy report, we're, we're just under that, but we're at 23.13%. In the quality area, we have our goal is to have our infection prevention, which is our combined overall standardized infection rate being 0.93 or lower. Um, happy to report we're, we're doing better than that at 0.71. Just to remind the board that that is, the 1.0 would represent a, um, an expected rate or a national average, uh, so we are quite a bit lower than that. In the finance area, uh, you heard from Bill Wojan, our CFO, earlier, but we have a goal of having our operating margin be at our budget of at 6.5%. We are projecting higher than that at this point at 7%. And then finally, in growth, we have two, two different goals. The first one being our inpatient admissions and observation outpatients being at 46,000 uh, patients or higher. Uh, we are tracking towards 52,000 at this point. And our outpatient registrations goal is uh, 894,000, and we are tracking higher in that as well at 946,000. So quite busy uh, in the hospital right now. Looking a little deeper at the patient experience report card, uh, you can see the 10 areas that we, we measure, uh, and then you can see what the national median score is and the 75th percentile score. And you can see in the national median, we, we, are, we beat the national median in all 10 uh, categories, and in the 75th, we're, be, it, we're, we're meeting or exceeding it in eight out of the 10. Uh, the two that are very close, um, but not quite at the 75th, are both the ER, uh, the main hospital, and then Northport, uh, which are just seeing tremendous volumes right now. David, will you take a question? Though? Please. Um, these, uh, it's my understanding that the, the scores, the national scores, reset uh, every so often? Yes, sir. Is this I, based on the new ones, or is this still the same that you've been reporting? It's the latest data that we have. So, I, so I, I know they're reset at least annually, if not every quarter, but, but this, we always report the latest data. All right, thank you. <coughs> I do want to point out just one more on that page uh, before we go on. The NICU has an average score of 100, so it uh, doesn't get much better than that. So just to call out to our, um, our NICU staff who uh, make sure that every um, child down there and family has, a, has an excellent experience. Excellent. So, a couple other, uh, several other stories. Uh, SMH recognized for trauma care for seniors. Uh, Sarasota Memorial's trauma team was recently honored for overall excellence uh, in caring for uh, seriously injured patients and specifically uh, for preventing life threatening complications among senior trauma patients. In November, uh, more than 1,500 clinicians attended the American College of Surgeons uh, 2019 Trauma Quality Improvement Program annual scientific meeting, they should shorten that, in Dallas. Uh, to learn uh, from experiences and best practices shared by uh, leading trauma directors um, and our own Dr. Brockhurst uh, was keynote speaker at it. So please uh, thank him for that, representing us and congratulating. Um, podcast focuses on cancer advances. Um, you know, I think, um, I think all of you know that we have a pretty robust podcast um, uh, program that goes on here. 
Uh, we are, um, I, I w if you don't, I would encourage everyone to go on to uh, their, what, however they receive uh, podcasts. Mine happens to be Apple, but I'm sure there's a whole lot of other ways to do it and, and um, listen to them because they're pretty fascinating. So uh, this month we had um, our Lung Cancer Awareness Month uh, for November, which featured uh, special SMH health cast, uh, podcast with Cancer Center Services Medical Director Dr. Richard Brown discussing the future of cancer care at uh, SMH. And then we had a two-part series uh, with uh, Drs. Paul Chomiak and, and Paul Vesco, who uh, presented another episode on, on catching and curing lung cancer and really talking a lot about uh, the science with that, as well as uh, the new Monarch uh, robot system that, that you so graciously uh, allowed us to purchase. So um, I'd encourage you to go on. I think they're both pretty fascinating. New behavior health outpatient programs. This month, SMH is opening uh, two new behavior health outpatient programs to help fill gaps in our care. Uh, that was something we all discussed and put out in our strategic plan uh, earlier this year. The new partial um, hospital program and intensive outpatient uh, program can serve as an alternative to or transformation from, transition from inpatient hospitalization. The programs are located in the Heart uh, Pavilion uh, where, while plans are developed for a new behavior health center. So we're on our way. SMU and FSU uh, also this has, have launched a new palliative care fellowship. Uh, Sarasota Memorial and, and Florida State University are partnering to offer the area's first hospice and palliative uh, medicine fellowship. It is one of 13 approved sites in Florida where board certified physicians can acquire advanced, advanced training to address the many medical and psychosocial issues that accompany serious illness or, and or end of life care. During the year um, program, year long program, two physicians uh, fellows will compete, uh, complete rotations in the inpatient palliative care, community hospice uh, air, care in cancer's care. Uh, Dr. Uh, Joel Valhakis um, is a medical director supporting um, supportive care services, is the program's founding director. Uh, I will tell you, we did uh, match um, both of our, our um, slots uh, in our first year program, so uh, thank you to, to Dr. Uh, Valhakis for um, making that happen. Construction uh, progress on the cancer tower, we're getting ready uh, to go vertical. Uh, we have the cranes are already going up. Deep foundations uh, are complete and work is underway on, uh, on the pile cap portion of the foundation. Two tower cranes are scheduled to be in place by the end of December, expecting first delivery of walls and column form work uh, this month. And we are on track to open in fall of 2021. Construction progress on our Radiation Oncology Center. Uh, the permanent power FPL uh, is on. Uh, lobby glass curtain wall framing is substantially complete. Our linear accelerator vault doors, shielding, and true beam uh, bases are installed. Uh, first linear accelerator will be delivered at the end of January. Uh, the skylights are complete, and we're on track to open the su this summer of yeah. 2020. That's great. If that's not enough construction, we'll give you one more. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a little project going on in Venice right now. Uh, it's our new hospital. Over 260 columns have been poured, uh, 100 of those on the second floor. Um, 12 elevated deck pours have, have taken place, over 9,000 cubic yards of concrete, uh, which, which happens to be 900 cement trucks. Approximately 1 million pounds of rebar has been installed. The building is now 32 feet tall and on track to open uh, in fall of 2021. So SMH leader named uh, Medical Professional of the Year. Uh, the Local Cancer uh, Resource Network recently honored uh, SMH Patient Care Services Director Yolanda Green for her outstanding work with oncology patients, naming the longtime, uh, our, our longtime leader uh, Medical Professional of the Year. Uh, Yolanda oversees SMH's uh, Cancer Institute, uh, Medical Surgical Oncology Infusion, Breast Health Services, Cancer Care Services, and Cancer Research. <coughs> as well as the Center uh, for Wound Healing and Spiritual Care Services. So if you see Yolanda, please take a minute and congratulate her on that. It's a big deal. Emergency medicine residents uh, helping the habitat. Members of our emergency medicine uh, residency program recently spent a day volunteering uh, for Habitat uh, for Humanity. 
The physicians look forward to an ongoing partnership with the organization and plan to make it an annual event. And once again, these are our new residents that just started here um, back in July. So happy to see that they're co contributing to the community already. So many departments continue the health system's long tradition of donating toys, gifts, and other items uh, to community members in need uh, for the holiday season by participating in this year's Mothers Helping Mothers Toy Drive, Adopt a Family, and the Senior Friendship Center's um, wish list fulfillment. So really want to take a minute and thank everyone, um, one of our staff members who takes their time to do this. It's, it's a whole lot of our staff, not just the people that are pictured here. Uh, and if you see them selling uh, baked goods in the halls, cookies or whatever, I can tell you that's what they're doing. They're doing that to raise money to, um, to fund some of these programs. So buy a cookie. Yeah, absolutely. Public safety team uh, help law enforcement partners make holidays uh, bright for children. The, Sar Sher yeah, the Sarasota Sheriff's Office recently kicked off its annual toy drive with a holiday uh, tree generously donated by Sarasota Memorial's Public Safety Department. A public safety team delivered the tree and ornaments to the um, agency's headquarters. Public safety um, also made generous donations to the Sarasota Housing Authority and the Sarasota Police Department's annual Shop the Cop, Shop with a Cop uh, event to help children in need. As always, we have a number of upcoming um, lecture series. Uh, several of our, our physicians that you, you know well are, are giving the free lecture series. I'd invite anyone. Uh, to go to our website and see these different uh, events, as well as our annual Parkinson's Symposium, uh, which is in January. Uh, we only, the only thing we ask is that you go on and, and RSVP on our, um, through our, our uh, marketing department or online, just so we can get a head count, but they're free and open to the public. And uh, finally, you know, it's interesting, our marketing team has a, has a lot of creative ideas, on, which are not represented at all on this slide. <laughs> But um, they put a, uh, uh, a baby Yoda on it late, lately, which I'm not sure everyone on this board knows what a baby Yoda is. But um, I didn't until they told me what it was. But I think we got more calls about baby Yoda on the, our screen uh, than we've ever had anyone recognize our sign before. So <laughs> with that, I'm going to leave it to you and say thank you and uh, happy holidays. Happy thank holidays. You. Any questions for David? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is uh, on the agenda is consent agenda. I have anything on the consent agenda? Okay, no items there. Uh, public comments, Karen? No, sir. Okay, no public comments. Uh, back to you, legal matters? No, nothing to report. Okay, very good. So uh, I don't believe we have any other business, so we stand adjourned. Thank you.